so a couple other additions at the end of 1988 are the former sheep herders who arrive in the WWF here as the Bushwhackers. Uh, Jim, their characters are kind of similar to yours in a lot of ways, in that they're kind of. I like, love those guys. God bless uh, Butch, guys. of course. I, I just saw Luke uh, last. Excuse me. <clears throat> I saw Luke last month down there in Florida. Yeah, I was with those guys when I uh, did the loop. You know, I, I, I broke into Texas, New York, Hawaii, Georgia, Pensacola. When I went to Pensacola, this wild man dug in with a fur and chains on it. I was staying with the Bushwhackers. Joe LaDuca was a little motel down on the beach in uh, Panama City Beach. Uh, God, it was great, man. It was a really good time. Uh, really great. I, I had a $500 a week guarantee. You know, right. and Fuller was a payoff guy. So you get a gram of Coke, a bag of weed and 300 bucks or any combination, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever the 500 bucks, you, you get whatever you wanted, man. <laughs> it was a, and, and I had a hot little stripper, oh, Gail shit. Conway. <laughs> 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 oh my God. We were living down there, man. And that's when Buck Robley called me and said, hey, come to San Antonio. We got a spot for you to work with Bruiser Brody. And I'm like, uh, thanks, Buck. Things are going pretty good here in Pensacola. Who wants to leave the stripper behind? <laughs> well, <Panama> City, <laughs> yeah. But then Brody called me and says, hey, that's where I became Hacksaw. But, but uh, yeah, living with Luke, those guys are great, man. The Bushwhackers. And like I said, we stole Wembley Stadium. Everybody else out there chopping meat for 10 minutes. Bam, bam. Lay it in good. It's a big crowd. You know? <laughs> me, me, Bush, and Luke. Yo! Yay! Ho! <laughs> kind of a match made in heaven. We did eight minutes of that that we didn't touch. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. And the place was rocking, man. I've heard that those guys were no stranger to having fun after the shows. Uh, were you partying with those guys a lot? A little bit, not a whole lot, yeah, not a whole whole bunch, but uh, yeah, but that I, I to this day I, I enjoy seeing Luke and of course uh, Miss Butch. He was coming to WrestleMania in California when it was out in L.A. and he made the flight and uh, he passed away. Uh, he w they took him off the plane, I believe, in an ambulance, and yeah. we're, we're all looking forward to seeing him because he went back to New Zealand, and uh, they're actually from New Zealand. You know, a lot of guys. Uh, you know, Kamala is not really from Uganda. <laughs> the Bushwhackers were really from New Zealand, man. Man, a couple of legends. And I'm glad that they got their just due getting into the Hall of Fame there a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, they're definitely. Uh, yeah. And they're guys that, that they, they really saw the transition from when it was a carnival type business where you had, a, you know, you they pushed the guy up against the curtain, blackjack him and stuff back in the day into the. <laughs> You know, worldwide entertainment it is now. They they really and survived. It's hard to survive. You think of how long it is to, or how hard it is to survive in our business to have that kind of longevity. And Luke has, has been there in a very competitive business. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. And yeah, I mean, you said it. They're coming in and seeing how the business is changing. So they're going from uh, apparently being like these really rough, nasty, like blood soaked kind of wrestlers as the sheep herders. So all of a sudden they're like licking kids heads and being silly. And it's like, what did you think of that transition for them? I thought uh, true professionals, guys like that, they gave them that gimmick. They took it and ran with it. one man gang, big, impressive, tough, mean son of a gun. They made him a keen. He's dancing to the ring. Harry Taylor, they put Red Rooster on him. Cock a doodle doo. No. If he you died, cock a doodle doo. If he really embraced the gimmick, it would have worked. If they give you the gimmick, uh, janitor to the WCW, you know, whatever they give you, you got to make it work. You can't say, well, geez, I don't know if I want to do that. You got to put your heart into it. Yeah, it's this it's the business. I mean, you look at Dusty Rhodes, who's going to be coming in here in 1989, and they put him in polka dots. I think a lot of guys, especially with Dusty's history and legacy, would be, you know, kind of poo-poo that idea. But Dusty came in and he owned it, and, I mean, he made it iconic. Exactly. Another true professional, man. That's that's the guys that uh, are the best in the world. That's You don't get on the WWE, AEW. You don't make it to that level without being the cream of the crop. And that's what was there then and what's there now.